You're watching Griffin Sports Insider, presented by Spine and Sport Physical Therapy. Now, here are your hosts, Brett Easley and Ryan Minley. Hello and welcome. This is the season finale of GSI. Shed a tear a little bit. Yeah, but we're not going away forever, just for a couple months. That's right. We're not going away forever. But as we, at least we hope, but as we wind down, we have a team that's turning it up. You know, that's an understatement of epic proportions. Slightly. We begin with Griffin Baseball and an unreal winning streak that grows by the week. We're now at 14 in a row entering this week. That means superstitions can get a little silly around Griffin Nation. Since we've started this uh, winning streak, all the pitchers, we've played bocce ball before every game. We use a med ball and baseballs. We play bocce ball for about an hour and a half. We play three games, and we believe that's why our win streak is where it's at, because of bocce ball. When I take my socks off, they stand up. I haven't, I haven't washed my socks since before Emporia, so. And that which was what three weeks ago this whole week I haven't washed my socks or anything that I've worn I've worn everything same and just haven't washed it it's a mustache part of that <laughs> yeah I mean it's I mean yeah pretty much it just got off <laughs> yeah I've, been, I've gotten a lot of grief from it from people well no one can question anything right now though the overall record 15 and 3 the MIAA conference record 10 and 0 the bats continue to be the catalyst the Griffins putting up video game numbers a 393 team batting average they got two guys hitting over 500 this season Michael Schultz and Bubba Dotson Western has compiled 27 home runs in 18 games they're scoring more than 10 runs per game yeah everyone's swinging the bats well and it's contagious and we're just hitting everything right now so we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and just keep moving forward. The more we play like we do and we have been, the more of a mark you get on yourself. So you're going to get a lot of teams playing at the top of their game when you walk in. While the hits keep coming, it's a Griffin pitcher that's rewriting the history books. Brandon Simmons became Missouri Western's all-time wins leader Friday. It happened after a complete game effort victory over Northeastern State. It was the senior right-hander's 28th career win. It surpassed Nick Finn's 38-year-old school record. Simmons is 4-0 on this season. He's been viewed as the Griffin's ace all four years. It's it's unbelievable. Words can't describe how I feel right now, and uh, I just I can't give enough pride to my to my team, my family, and everything like that. These guys are just unbelievable. That guy is the most unbelievable competitor I think I've ever seen uh, since I've been coaching here. It's something that's been it's been lurking at me since last year, but uh, it's just, I didn't think it was ever going to happen. I, mean, I can't thank my teammates enough for it. Joining us now, head baseball coach Buzz Verduzco. You had to win 14 in a row before we would let you on live on the show. Finally. So <laughs> Finally did it. I didn't know that was a requirement. Well, just the long winning streak gets you on, so we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, talk about Brandon Simmons first before we get into the streak, and, and obviously we just heard from him uh, a special accomplishment, a 38-year-old record that he breaks. You know, it's hard to believe. I mean, it's been that many years, but... Um, I mean, what he's brought, brought to our program has just been unbelievable as far as his, his winning attitude, what he brings to the, to the practice field, um, what he is as a teammate, um, and just how he is overall um, in competition. I mean, a lot of what he does on the mound uh, and how he competes brings a lot of the best out of every other player, including position players. So we're going to lose a lot when we don't have him next year. So we're going to enjoy it while we have it, okay? And he's going he's, to and he's going to finish strong, and we can't wait to see what the rest of the year has for him. And as far as the winning streak goes, we heard from guys about their superstitions. What about your super? Do you have any different superstitions right now? We, we know about some, but but just with this winning streak, and are you doing anything differently or the same, or not washing your underwear or anything like that? <laughs> no, that's kind of gross. But yeah. no, I don't. I don't <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have. You any, would go there. I don't. Ha I don't have any specifics. Um, but I am conscious of just how I kind of prepare. Whether it's whether I whether I pack my bag for a road trip a certain way or I make sure I'm, I am wearing the same socks but clean. Um, so those are just little small things that don't mean anything, but they, they mean the world to baseball guys, I guess, at some point. Well, Buzz, you're now hitting 393 as a team. You have 11 guys on your roster that are hitting above 300, and you have one, two guys that are hitting 500, and one of those has played in every game you've played in Bubba Dodson. Mm -hmm. Talk about what's going on at the plate right now. I think you knew before the year this was going to be a good hitting team. Did you know this was going to be this good of hitting game? No, we didn't know it was going to be this good. We, we knew that we had the potential to be able to score runs, uh, number one, and be very offensive. But I, I think the, the start that we've had right now 
um, we probably couldn't have predicted. Um, but we do know that within our lineup, every time we go out, we have a chance all the way through the order. Um, even Schrader, our catcher, you know, who was struggling for a period of time, now he's starting to hit, and he typically is hitting the eight hole. So it's 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 been something that. You know, hopefully you can continue throughout the course of the year because we don't want to, we don't want to go 17, 18, 20 games, whatever, and say we were the best 20 game team that we've had for a while. You know, we want we want to finish strong, and so th that offense we think is going to show every day because it is so deep, and so we, we want to be able to con continue with that. The rest Have of you the year. ever seen anything like this? No. And in fact, I was talking to my assistant coach the other day, and we were trying to compare our offense to even a lot of the MIAA offense, offenses that we've had, in particular uh, Central Missouri, I think back in, in the early 2000s, we competed against them. And, and I would match ours up with them, uh, I mean, any time, and not, not, to, not to feel overconfident, but um, that's what we bring one through nine, and it's been, and it's been nice. It, it, and it doesn't mean that there's not going to be a pitcher somewhere down the road who's going to be able to shut you down, you know, you're not going to go 50 six and oh or 50 and oh or 47 and three or whatever it's not going to be that that's not the way baseball is um, but at the same time um, our job is to make sure they come out ready to play every time to give them the best chance to win let's talk about your pitching staff we talked about Brandon Simmons in the open you know what you're going to get in Ethan Ward but talk about where you're at with your staff right now and we have um, some guys in those roles who are really really who are really really good we think uh, Jake Jones, Oliver Cady, uh, Banks Bourne now, who pitched a, a great game the other day against Northeastern. He's now in the mix. Um, uh, Kyle Kelly, another young redshirt freshman kid who's been a, a big time strike thrower for us. So we have uh, Jared Hawkins out of Wathena. So we, ha we have some kids in there who we know can go in the game and keep us in games. Over the long haul, over the course of the rest of the season, the best we can keep them to get, keep us consistent as far as them being consistent performers, we got a good chance. One really cool thing about this team too is is there's a lot of likable guys. This is a team that you want to root for, a lot of good character guys, and, and that always helps, doesn't it? You know what? That's one thing that I think has made for me um, has made this season pretty enjoyable so far, and it's going to be like that the rest of the year. It's not going to change whether we win or lose. You know, when you have a team like that, not only are, right now up to this point are they talented offensively, but they're unselfish, and then you can do a a lot of big things if you're unselfish you're not worried about who's getting the credit and that's the way this team is and the pitching staff is the same way. <laughs> Buzz I need to know you're, you've obviously been around baseball a lot of years we do some in-game promotions at the spring sports complex what's the goofiest in-game promotion you've been around or seen or your favorite? The goofiest? You've been around? Yes. Uh, the goofiest that I think I've seen actually haven't had had to do with golf. Okay. Uh, they, they would set up a, they would set up a cup on the top of the dugout and they would actually putt from one end of the dugout, knowing that the, that the, that the dugout is fairly sloped. Mm -hmm. And they had a cup at the opposite end, and they had to putt from the one end of the dugout to the opposite end, which I thought was pretty neat. A whole fan saw it. Wow. And okay. so, yeah, so that was pretty neat. We can do that here. Our I'll dugouts that are flat. Yes, they exactly. are. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Buzz, secondly, you're famous for, maybe a lot of people, you didn't even know that you're famous for this, but uh, Buzzisms. you used to drive a famous car, the Subaru, that I think uh, had a lot of miles on that, and it the came Subi. to, it, it came to a, yeah, the Subi. It yep. came to a fiery death a few years ago. Do you have a good <laughs> Subaru story maybe you can share with us? How about how it came you to are a fiery for death. That, yes. uh, well, I'll, I will tell you a story, though. I mean, not the fiery death, but okay. I'll tell you a Subi story. And, and I'm kind of known for having odd things in my car. Oh. Okay, and and the Subi was one, and so anyway, okay. my assistant coach back then was John Bradley. Yeah, and he was working on some benches, putting them together, and I was actually at his house, and he says, you know, I'm, I've almost got this one fixed, but all I need is a two by four, about this big, to finish it out. And you just happen to have one. Let me go look in the Subi. Sure enough, I open the back hatch of the Subi. There you go, two by four right there. He finished his job. Wow. There's my Subi. Never so Subi did it. And Buzz, and finally, and I hate to put you on the spot here, but um, who's the best player that you've coached here at Missouri Western since you've been here? Troy Landy. Troy Landy. Hands yeah, down. Hands down. About Troy Landy. Best team. Okay. Without question. But I will say this. Um, there's, some team, there's some players on this team right mm -hmm. now by the time this season's out. Could chance. be in that category, but I don't want to mention them. Well, that's good. But you yeah. won 14 in a row. You're 15 yeah. and three. We can talk about some guys being maybe the best you've ever coached this year because yeah. this could be a very special yeah. season. We, we, we think so. Hopefully. That's Buzz Verduzco. Congratulations on the start so far. Far, keep it up. Can Thank you do you. that? Absolutely. We will. Okay, we'll do our just best. don't ever lose again. Nope. We'll be right back. <laughs> The most helpful physical therapist in the world on breathing. 
That's a deep subject. Deep breathing, that is. Stay healthy, my friends. The first time in 25 years, Missouri Western will have a new men's basketball coach. The search is on after Tom Smith's retirement. And joining us now to talk more about the search, Athletic Director Kurt McGuffin. Welcome again. Second all-time appearance. Second all-time. First time in a year and a half. That's good. That means everything's all right. That means everything's going well. That's, that's right. Good. We only bring you on for controversial or important topics. That's right. So that's, good. It's okay. that's good. That's yeah, good. We talked last week about the process of the search. You've had months to look. Just where are we at right now in the process? Well, we had months to look, but that doesn't mean everything was going to happen, you know, until after the season. Obviously, coaches were coaching, and some of them were a little timid to talk to me during their seasons. But we're letting it play out, and some coaches are still coaching, but uh, we're narrowing it down. I feel very comfortable with our list, over 200 applicants. But, you know, really, it was a matter of any, any coaching search. It's a matter of you already have a few people in mind, and hopefully they're interested. And I think we're going to come out on top and, and have a good uh, person in the position. What's key to you for this incoming person? What are you looking for? for in the next head coach here? Well, I think everything is about fit. Who can come into Missouri Western and, and take on what we are as an institution and, and, and thrive on it? I don't think it's, I mean, it's, I don't think it's anything about facilities or anything like that. It's about somebody that's probably uh, from the Midwest that knows Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, all these areas that makes us important and we can recruit from. Uh, obviously, recruiting is the number one thing that coaches do, bring in good players, bring in good characters and good character people and, and, uh, and go with that. But uh, I'm really excited on, on some potential people and uh, hopefully we'll have something here within the next couple weeks. When we look at the formula and we look at, at your hire last year, Rob Edmondson, he was an NAIA coach who had won a national championship. Uh, he had Division One experience, head coaching experience. Is that kind of the model you go for, or do you try not to limit yourself to, to too many lines? Yeah, I, I've never tried to limit myself because, I, you know, someone that I've maybe known that comes through that, you know, you feel comfortable with about trust and loyalty, you know, those things come up. But I think sometimes uh, be, having been a head coach at some level, gives you probably a leg up a lot of times. You know, here and I am saying this as never being the first time AD, but you know, I think it's, it, gives, it does give you that, that sense of uh, that you can trust that someone that's handled a budget, that's handled their own call and their own timeouts at needed times, you know, handling player issues with discipline or, or anything like that. So maybe some type of head coaching experience, not necessarily Division One or Division Two, just some type of head coaching experience. Also, um, you know, different maybe levels of, of where they've been. And looking at this pool as a whole, and obviously the three of us are biased, but there's been a lot of interest in this search, right? I mean, there's been a lot of applications that have come across your desk, haven't there? Quite a bit, you know, and a lot of phone calls. You know, you, you, everybody's your best friend now, oh, you sure. know, until you maybe you don't hire them or, or you put them along further. But, you know, I think that puts great pride in what Missouri Western's accomplishing. Same thing last year. We had a lot of interest because I think people really understand uh, that this is a great basketball town. You know, we, you know, we may not have won as many as we've wanted to in the last five or six years but people have still attended our games and I think people look at that I've had a couple coaches say you know I look up where Missouri Western is on the in the, in the attendance charts that they that are published and you guys are always right there you know and I think people coaches look at that and they want to see that there is a there is a, a will to win here we have the we have the bones to win here we think we have a great facility we have the finances to in a budget that uh, when I've shared that with people they think oh that's pretty good you know what we can give our people so I think uh, we have a, a good situation you know it, it's it's very important hire it definitely is in fact the last two women's men's and women's basketball hires will hopefully continue that we'll have success like we used to have in the in the mid 90s well Kurt is an avid watcher of this show as I'm sure you are you've probably seen the end of our segments uh, we, we've done a lot of different things and in, in light of Rob Edmison not being on the show this week we usually go out of the box with Rob where I ask him three really goofy questions that don't really relate to anything and he usually gives me a pretty good answer so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you three goofy questions and okay. see what kind of answers Kurt's you get corner. Kurt's corner I, I didn't come up with a name I guess I was unprepared this week at talk okay. management about Sorry. that but uh, Kurt, are you a Dancing with the Stars guy? You know, a, a new uh, show is getting ready to premiere, a new cast. Do you watch Dancing with the Stars? Are you hooked on that like no, a lot of I'm people not. are? No, I agree. He's no. not. Fist pump no. He's not. Good. Okay. Right. Um, it's March Madness. This is March. Uh, obviously, a lot of great college basketball moments. You've been a lot of, around a lot of good college bands. Do you have a favorite March Madness moment? Ooh, I would say 87. 87? Uh, Keith, Keith Smart's jump shot on the corner to beat sure, Syracuse. Syracuse. That was kind of when basketball was huge for me, and I went out and practiced that shot 
all the time. After How many that, times did you make it after that? A lot. A lot. I'm not going to tell you I didn't. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Just stay confident yeah. and invincible. And, and kind of kind of along the lines of what this interview was just about, you've been around basketball. Uh, you played. You coached. You've been a manager. Who's your favorite coach of all time? Who, who do you look up to in coaching ranks? If, if, if there's one you can you can point to and say, golly, I, I really admire him. That's pretty good there. Um, I'd say Jack Hartman. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Kansas State. Defensive discipline coach mm -hmm. from that kind of that tree of Hank Iba and in that area. Thank you for Thanks, coming guys. in and joining us, and we'll we'll talk to you again once we have a new coach in. Yep. That's Kurt McGuffin. We'll be right back. I am your physical therapist. My job is to crack the whip, push you. Got an ache? I've got the remedy. Muscles weak? I'll make you strong. Whatever it is, I will get you better. I'm Nikki Hilgenberg, and this is Spine and Sport. Missouri Western Tennis still searching for its first win this spring. Griffs are going through some expected growing pains. Almost the entire team made up of freshmen and sophomores. Now, since we're so young, we don't know exactly how it goes yet. Like, because there are stronger teams out there, and this is a tough conference to play into. I, I said earlier in the year we had the best team that we I've ever had out there, and, and I still believe that uh, it hasn't translated into wins. Um, we are young. A lot of the other teams are young too. It's just a matter of being able to put it together in matches. Griffin Tennis now will host Northwest Missouri State on Wednesday due to bad weather expected outside. That is a 6 p.m. match. Griffin softball back home Friday and Saturday for their own crossover tournament. Yeah, the girls of spring entered the week 14 and 8 overall, 2 and 2 in MIAA play. Here's a look back on last week's home opening and conference opening weekend. Friday, home opener, MIAA conference opener for Missouri Western softball. The Griffins taking on Central Missouri, but a picture-perfect day didn't end that way. Western struggled from the plate all day, falling 3-1 in Game 1 and 2-0 in Game 2. Their record now 12-8 overall. Saturday, softball marketing ideas from McGuffin Kids. A popcorn? Thank you. Missouri Western catches it, I think it, we should get free popcorn. And hey, we'll talk to the boss and get back with you. After being swept by Central Missouri Friday, the Griffins getting revenge in a big way against Southwest Baptist. First inning, Megan Remick drops a base hit to shallow center. Kerry Lorbert, Michelle Stevenson score. Western up 3-0 after one. Second inning, more the same. Two on for Bree Fleshner. She'll bring him home with the two-run base hit. Griffs go up five zip, and that's good pad for Jackie Bishop. The junior pitcher scattered one hit in four innings of work. Griffs blanked the Bearcats in game one, 5-0 the final. Game two, the same as game one. Pick it up third inning, Western already up big. Taylor Anning just made it bigger. Solo homer, her third of the year, gives her team a 6-0 lead. Couple batters later, Sarah Elliott continues to find holes and drive in runs. She's batting 426 on the season. Western scores five in the inning. They gave freshman Janie Smith some good defense too. Anding to Stevenson to Gillespie, 6-4-3 double play. Western completes the sweep with an 8-0 victory. They're now 14-8 overall, 2-2 two two in conference play. And after a disappointing Friday, this was a redeeming Saturday. The difference was we played more loose and we weren't as uptight and we, uh, you know, overall we had a really good day, air free and things like that. I think a lot of us decided that we wanted to actually have fun. I mean, we play the sport, so we need to have fun when we do it. So we decided that beforehand and I think that was it. It was awesome. It's just after one person get hit, it just rolled. And when we've been like hitting and then it's been spotty hitting, but now we we're just rolling off each other. We talked about having good at bats and not pressing so much and just relaxing a little bit. And I thought that they did really well at that today. They responded to that, and so that's a good thing. Softball back home Friday. It'll be a busy day that day for some elite football players as well. Well, it definitely will be. Pretty exciting stuff. Missouri Western will host its annual Pro Day. Scouts from all 32 NFL teams will be in St. Joe to take a look at some of the top college talent from around the area. That talent will include a slew of Griffin grads, highlighted by NFL hopefuls David Bass and Michael Hill. Pro Day begins Friday morning at 9 a.m. 
And another Griffin football news. The Griffins will be looking for a new offensive coordinator. His current offensive coordinator, Tyler Fenwick, pretty cool stuff, is now the new head coach at Missouri S&T down in Rolla. Fenwick has been on the Griffin coaching staff since 2007. Yeah, you know, it's a neat thing to see, especially Tyler's a great guy. Yeah, he's an awesome guy, a great coach, did some wonderful Very things with so. this uh, top-ranked offense. And when you go 12-2 and two and make the quarterfinals in football, you're probably going to get other looks. So great opportunity for him. You betcha. Congratulations to Coach Fenwick. Meanwhile, some of the returning 2013 Griffin football players, they've been busy this offseason. And brace yourself because this is something you never thought you'd see. Members of the Griffin offensive and defensive lines teamed up with the cheerleaders for a surprise performance during a basketball game a couple weeks ago. Yes, our linemen became cheerleaders for a day. They've been practicing the stunning routine in secret for months now. Hey, it turned out pretty well. Oh, we know Coach Bell very well, and so we kind of conned him into letting the football players, making the football players actually perform with us. So, and then they, they actually like it. Yeah, they're going to lie to you and tell you they don't, but they like it. As a football team, as a Griffin, when we set out to do something, we do it 100%. And, we, and that just so happens to be cheerleading. Just so happens to be cheerleading. Did you have to force them to do it? No, I, there was a little reluctance at first, and then once they got there and realized throwing girls in the air is pretty fun, they were all right. I'm extremely proud. What was your favorite part? Every bit of it. Mine was when Jeremy Jacobson dropped that girl. That wasn't very impressive, no. There were some people getting kicked in the face, some people getting dropped on their head. I definitely have some new respect for these girls. Those stunts that we did were very advanced stunts, especially for people that have never stunted before. So I'm very proud of them. I want them to come to the cheer squad, honestly. <laughs> was very hesitant about it, but um, whatever we can do to help. Was he worry about image or injury? Both. Meanwhile on the links, I guess uh, practicing in the snow did Griffin golfers pretty well. The women went down to Central Missouri Spring Invite. That was actually played in Branson last week and won the whole darn thing. They bested four other teams, including rival Northwest, to bring home the trophy. GSI will be right back. No win. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is certainly long enough, and it is certainly perfect. Man. Another field goal by oh. Greg Zerline. He is now 5 for 5. The most helpful physical therapist in the world on field goal kicking. When the game's on the line, there's no one better than Zerline. Train like the pros, my friends. A lot of that has to do with how fast does this foot load the knee, load the hip. It's all this chain. For two years now, we've trained like the pros with spine and sport physical therapy, some of the most unique methods around. You can obviously see that here. And joining us now, the man behind the method to the madness, Fred Schunkweiler of Spine and Sport. Here he Welcome. Is. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, you having Good us. Have you here. Let's talk about the final one this week. We've got Michael Hill, a uh, senior running back who yeah. hopefully is an NFL hopeful was in the office the other day doing some combine type of stuff. Just talk about what we had. Um, it is fun to work with athletes like Mike. I mean, talking about the top caliber athletes like, like Michael and, and David Bass. And so we had a blast. You know, Michael's got his pro day coming up. Mm -hmm. And 40 yard dash, you know, we kind of went into it and said, you know, what's, what's your goal for that, for that pro day? What do you want to get better at? Speed, and he's a running back. And, some of the scouting reports has got to get faster. So we're going to talk about how to get faster. So we got Mike warming up. First of all, before you do anything with speed, you want to get warmed up. And your warm up, your engine is your hips. And so we got these mini bands around Mike's legs, and we're turning on those glutes, getting ready for what we're about to do. So this is our dynamic warm up using mini bands. We progress into some stretches. He's doing a few stretches to warm up because we don't want to go out and do a speed workout and get injured. Sure. Injury prevention is number one goal, and any injury prevention program is a great sports performance program. So we've got our dynamic warm up. We're now jumping on this vibration plate. The vibration plate is the latest in sports science. You know, when you stand on that plate, it's vibrating. Uh, it increases the muscle recruitment. So it's getting fast twitch muscle fibers. When you get into the physiology of muscles, we've got slow twitch, fast twitch. So this is the latest, the greatest to get us uh, ramped up, ready to run. We now are moving to the wall. And so when we move to the wall, we call this our movement prep. 
we are analyzing the techniques that are needed for the 40 yard dash for the speed. So we're looking at angles, how he's leaning into the wall. What's his foot angle? What his knee angle is? How is he working? You see me pushing on him a little bit, creating resistance to challenge those angles and the physics behind the, the equation or the formula for speed, so to say. From there, we would probably jump into some um, sled or parachute work. I didn't have a, that much space in my clinic, so we jumped right into some of the plyometrics and what we're really working on with Mike on the football field is going from um, side to side motion like a running back going over these hurdles and then taking off and doing a plyo step and sprinting down the field. So it's a progression of how we want to train speed. There's a method to it. It's not just let's go out and run 40 yards. Let's create the technique and then train for that. Well, we've already seen, obviously, why folks should go to spine sport, but, but give us another pitch on, on what, what's, what's going on right now. What's the latest? You know, we just finished a remodel project. We kind of are the new and improved. We're running out of space, and so that's Ryan's, a good thing. Ryan's Absolutely. been there, so we've, we've created a little more space, done a little bit of technology upgrades. So we're having a lot of fun. We're going to launch our sports performance programs coming up this spring for the upcoming football camps. So a lot of injury prevention that we do and always treating those injuries that happen, unfortunately. That's what uh, keeps us going, uh, gets you back on the field as fast as we can. If somebody wants to get hooked up with you, tell folks, that, tell our listeners how to do that. Yeah, you can give us a call at 279-SSPT or look us up on the web at sspt-aquatics.com. Or you can get to them through gogriffins.com, spine and sport powers, gogriffins.com and powers GSI. And all that other stuff, basically everything Missouri Western related. The official sports consultant to Missouri Western Athletics. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Brad. It's been a great year. Thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate your support. None of our ridiculousness here is possible without you, so we really appreciate that. But it it well, bleeds over. It's been fun. Yep, it's been it's, it has been a lot of fun. That's Fred Schonkweiler, GSI. I'll be right back. We're a spine and sport, and uh, unfortunately I tore my ACL. It's unique in the way that they don't just fix the problem that you have, they fix the problem that caused the problem that you have. Fred's very knowledgeable about the entire injury and all the causes and things you can do right now to prevent it from happening in the future. The Swimex is a very unique piece of equipment and it's, this is the only place in St. Joe that has one. And so that was specifically why I sought uh, Spine and Sport out. And in there you can do pretty much everything you can't do on land because you don't have your full body weight. So you're allowed to jump, you're allowed to run, you're allowed to do presses and kick your legs and do things to strengthen all your muscles that you wouldn't normally be able to do on land with all your body weight. I would recommend Spine and Sport to anybody uh, from your average athlete to your professional athlete to someone who's just been injured and even a car wreck and needs to get healthy. Well, for weeks he's assaulted and been assaulted by some of Missouri Western's finest. Max Griffin will now get a hiatus, as will we, Brett Easley. We're off for a couple months. This is the last show for GSI for the spring, but we'll return in the fall. Well, we will return in the fall. Well, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about as well. Fall, winter, spring, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of good things going on here on campus right now. It helps there? when your teams are really, really good. Well, we've got some of those this year. It does. It's been and, a lot of fun. This has been a very memorable year. Well, it has been, and a lot of neat student athletes to talk to as well. Uh, a lot of good moments, and uh, I've got a suspicion that's probably going to continue uh, as the years go by here. I think so, too. Max, how do you feel about feel that? Good. Oh, yeah. He's probably, he's probably got what's coming to him. Well, he's hibernating. He is hibernating. Well, that is GSI for the 2012 2013 season. GSI, the show, it's over for a couple months, but the product, the videos, the stories, they'll continue on our website, gogriffins.com. So check us all out there, and we'll see you back here in August for football. As always, thanks for your support this year. Go Griff. Total pain.